So we've looked at permutations. Reminder, in a permutation, the order matters. The order is significant. Once you've chosen the items, if you mix them up, it's something different. An example would be a license plate. Say my license plate was 376 B C D and your license plate was 763 C D B. We've got the same letters and the same numbers in our license plate, but because the order is different, these are two totally different license plates. Okay, so we've been working with permutations. Another example would be your, uh, your locker combination. So in other words, if your locker combo was 7, 23, uh, 51, and mine was 23, 7, 51, we have different locker com combos even though we have the same three numbers. Sometimes when we're dealing with situations, the order does not make any difference or does not matter. These we call combinations. So it's very important that we know the difference between a permutation, where order matters. Once we've selected our, our letters and numbers, if we mix them up, we have something totally different. Or in other words, here, once we've selected our three numbers for our locker combo, when we change them around, it's something totally different. In a combination, that would not matter. So an example would be, if out of eight people I needed three volunteers for a project, it wouldn't matter who I chose first, second, or third. I just need three volunteers. Or another example of a combination would be I'm playing a game of cards and I need a queen, king, a queen, and a seven. Well, it wouldn't matter whether I got the king first, then the queen, and then the seven, or if I was handed a seven, a king, and then the queen. So before we end up working through to figure out how many ways we can arrange these things, we need to determine does the order matter? If it does, then we are using permutation P. If the order does not matter, once we've selected the things, it really doesn't matter the order that we've chosen them in, then we would consider a combination. So let's look more at these combinations. Let's consider that case where we had eight people and I need three volunteers. Well, we said it doesn't really matter the order that they're picked in. Whether I choose Bob first and then Jill and then Sam, doesn't matter whether I pick Sam first and then Jill and then Bob. The order doesn't matter, I just need three. We would donate this instead of 8P3 as 8 choose 3 or 8C3 for a combination. And you have this button on your calculator. It's the same place where you found the permutation button. And so when I work this out, I get 8C3 as being 56. Okay, so there's 56 ways of choosing three people out of eight. Now, we have a formula for this as well. We have NCR, which is N factorial, divided by N minus R factorial. So just like the permutation, you recognize this as being the formula for permutation. But because now order doesn't matter, we need to also divide by R factorial. What that does is it gets rid of all of the, the doubles, the ones where we have the exact same numbers just mixed up in different order. So if we did that with this example, this would be 8 factorial, 8 factorial divided by n minus r factorial, so 8 minus 3 factorial is 5 factorial. And then in addition now, we divide by the 3 factorial. So 8 factorial will be 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 5 factorial times 
3 factorial, and I can cancel all of those with all of those, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then 3 times 2 times 1 is 6, so this kind of works out nice because that would cancel with that 6, and 8 times 7 is 56. But usually we'll use our calculator to uh, do those that math crunching for us, but we need to be aware of this formula. Um, because we will be able to, need to be able to use that in certain applications. Another question you've always wondered. How many five card hands are there in a card game? So say we've got a standard deck of 52, and you want to know how many five card hands are there. Well, this is, this is obviously a combination because it doesn't matter what order the uh, five cards are dealt to you. You just have the five card hand. So, fifty-two C five would be the number of five card hands that we would possibly get. So, fifty-two C five. Two million five hundred ninety-eight thousand. 960. So that's quite a few. If you were dealt a five card hand, there are 2,598,960 different ways of getting a hand. And there's lots of other ways we can ask questions. For instance, how many hands uh, of cards would have all red? All red cards. Well, we know that the, the hearts and the diamonds are red, so I think that's 26 cards. There are 26 cards that we would like to choose from, because there's 26 red cards in the deck. Oh, let's do the, the five card hands. So we're going to choose five. So 26 red cards in the deck, we're going to choose five of those, 26 choose five, 65,780, 65,780 hands in the deck that you would get all red cards. How many five card hands could have three kings? Okay, well, we know there are four kings in the deck, and we need to choose three of them. So four, choose three. And then we need to, obviously if we're having a five card hand, that means we need to have two other cards that are not kings. So if there are four kings in the deck, out of the 52, that leaves 48 remaining cards in the deck that are not kings, and we need to choose two of those. So four kings, select three of them, that would give us our three kings, and 48 other cards in the deck, and we need to choose two of those to make up our five card hands. So you can see, there's the five cards that we're choosing, and here's out of the 52, four of which are our kings, and we need three of those, 48 other cards, and we're choosing two of those. So we go to the calculator, 4 choose 3, and 48 choose 2, we multiply those together, oops, let's make sure we enter it right, 4 choose 3, 48 choose 2, I get 4,512. So there are 4,512 possible hands that you could get that would have three kings. 